My name is Jose Moya, and I suffer from PTSD. Along with the PTSD, I suffer a lot of anxiety and depression. I was having, for years I have trouble living my life because I live in my head with all the negative thoughts and all the worries that can really bring somebody down. It comes, it comes so bad to the point that I think of death. I think about that so much that I can feel it touching my shoulder like it wants to take me right now. And the way I know that I survive is that I clench my fist until my knuckles turn white and I just snap out of it. See, what a lot of people don't, don't know is that I've been living with this for years. Some will say it's for the military, and I'm gonna say part of it is, but a lot of experience from childhood is also what, what I suffer from. See, when you ask people about me, they'll tell you I'm the type of person you wanna hang out with. But I've changed. They'll tell you that, you know, I'm the person at work that can make everybody laugh to make the days go by easier. You know, I'm the type of person that, you know, certain friends can actually depend on. I'm there for them if they really need me. I'm the type of person that I would encourage other people to push forward, go after your goals. But what they don't see is the fact that the day I spend making people laugh and enjoying their life, I got home and I got tears coming down my face. The time I'm telling people to just push forward, go after your dreams, I'm here suffering, worrying about what the hell I'm gonna do next. There's a lot of us out there that actually suffer from this. And one thing that we all have in common, we don't speak about it. Some of, us might, some of us go to, you know, the therapy, we talk to our doctors, but a lot of us don't feel comfortable talking to our doctors. A lot of us talk to them and tell them what we think they want to hear. Or when I was seeing the psychiatrist, the way he looked at me while I was telling my story, I just didn't feel comfortable. You don't feel right, but you need to let this shit out. So how did I start talking about it? How did I come out a little bit more comfortable and more, you know, coming out with problem, with my situation? To me, it started with the No Excuse Crew. My friend, my best friend, my brother, he, he spoke to me when he wanted to start this. And I heard him. And without him asking me, I heard him asking me to be a part of it. Because you can hear what somebody's trying to bring you along. And I heard him. And just like I heard him, he heard me say no and not directly. I wanted to be a part of that, but I did I was nowhere close to becoming that person. So as a friend, I was still gonna support him. So obviously I put, you know, I helped spread it out there when he needed it. You know, bought some of the gear, of course. But I started listening to him when he started doing his speeches, his motivational speeches on Mondays. And it grabbed and it and that's when I realized when I heard him as far as no excuse. We all have excuses. Hell, we all got everyday lives going on. But it wasn't so much the live as far as the, no, the excuses, as far as, you know, family, you don't have time to go to the gym, you got family, you got work, you got this, there's no time. To me, it's like I wanted to see how I was gonna apply that as far as the shit that I'm dealing with. How to not make PTSD, my PTSD, my anxiety, my depression, you know, not make that an excuse for me, you know, stopping me from doing what I want. So I listened to him. That was the first step. 
Then next thing I know, I'm catching myself. You know what? I saw this in the motivational speeches. And I tell you, when I, I've been listening to motiv motivational speeches at least a month straight, until finally I was just like, all right, let me do this for me. Forget everything else, forget who's involved. Let me go. And I started working out. But this time I wasn't working out for my body to change my physique or anything like that. This time I was actually going to work out just to clear my fucking mind. The stuff that was killing me inside every day. And I took different approaches. I went after work. The only problem is I was tired when I got home and everything like that, so I didn't have time for my family. I felt guilty because I wasn't doing my part as a, as a father or a husband. Then I found myself going early in the morning. And I'm telling you, it was, I was dreading going early in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning. But I kept going. And I kept going. And next thing I know, I found myself getting it into my own head before the anxiety and depression did. Filling my head with goals that I was gonna do that day, filling it with just nothing but getting shit done before anxiety and depression took over that day. And when I came out this gym, every single fucking morning, it was a brand new start. But I still wasn't doing enough. I still feel like I wasn't doing enough. So what I do, as I'm working out and everything like that, I came across a, you know, first form. And the reason I came across first form is because I met a personal trainer here at the gym that I go to, Nick, Nick Samarco, I believe is his last name, and Nick. And the way he was helping me out, he was not doing it, you know, because it was his job. He was doing it because he cared. You can tell the difference from people when you have you can feel that vibe. But of course, you know, he's still a personal trainer in my, in my view. But of course, he, he, he was helping me with my nutrition also. So he recommended me some first form products. Of course, I go to first form, I check out the pricing, and I'm like, hmm. But then it, I started researching the website. And it wasn't just about the products they were selling. Their brand is something that I've been missing for a long time since living in the military. The people there who, who represent First Form, that family there is something that I've been missing since leaving the military. So I've been listening to Andy. I'm listening to Sal, I'm listening to Will, I'm listening, I'm listening to all of them. These guys are encouraging people to change their lives. And I'm not just talking about, you know, gym goer, bodybuilding. They're talking to real people. So I look into a group. Now I came across these two challenges. The Transformation Challenge and the Athlete Search Challenge. And I'm looking at this form and I'm hesitating to fill it out. And there goes my best friend Isaac. There's no excuse. So here it is. From this person who suffered from PTSD. My whole life I felt I lived with guilt. As a child, you witness shit that you're not supposed to. I felt guilty that I couldn't save somebody from domestic violence right in front of me. I was just a kid. I felt guilty being mad at my mother for working who knows how many jobs just to be able to support me and my mother. I feel guilty. To this day, I'm still feeling guilty that I left them and joined the military. To this day, I feel guilty for my father's suicide. My father, 
way, way old when I was older. When I met him, he was fighting his own demons. He was never around for me. But when I came across him, I, I just tried to get to know him. As angry as I was, I was still trying to get to know him. But he was fighting his own demons. And when I got the phone call, I blamed myself. To this day, I still feel that guilt. But one thing I'm gonna tell you, this is the first, first time ever that I ever spoke about. Now my therapist knows, not the same people that lives under, underneath the same roof as I do know. But it had to come out. So, how can I help? I'm still learning. But I know how some of y'all out there feel when you think you can't speak. It, we gotta get out of our heads. And the gym has helped a lot. Cause during this whole time I'm coming to the gym, I'm realizing when you live in your head, you either live in the past or you're gonna or you think you're worried about too much about the future. And it's gonna kill you inside. But when you use your body, you're living the moment. When you actually use your body, when you're working out, you're actually living in the moment. When you're playing with your kids, you're in the moment. You're not worried about what's going on. And that's what I've learned about in these past eight weeks. So honestly, I've learned a lot in these eight weeks that I've learned, that I've ever learned. And I'm begging you, if you're dealing with something mentally, no matter what it is, we have to let it out. And we can do that together. We'll figure it out, but we have to speak. How I can help other people. Like my wife said, I'm doing it now, but I'm still learning. But I still want, I want them with me. I want people with me who suffer the same thing to come learn with me. We can beat this shit together. Do not let this take our lives. So yeah, I, I entered this challenge. Thinking about myself. But I'm gonna end this challenge knowing that there's a way to control this. It's not, our demons are not going anywhere. But we can control them. And there's ways to do it. So I just wanna tell you there's ways to control it. I found my way. And you guys can find yours too. I want to thank my brother Isaac, the CEO from the Noah's News Group, for actually pushing me, who always kept me accountable for everything. He made sure I went to the gym, made sure I worked on myself. I want to thank Jimmy Ortega, the guy that who I found here at the gym that, that I'm at, who became my workout partner, who's pushing me every day on the workouts that I received. And of course, I want to thank First Form. Because without your challenges, I don't think I would have found the strength, the mental strength, to share my story. Because the way you guys are, and the way you guys are towards people. This is why I believe I am first form.